Hey, just a warning, while Fuller House is a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Fullest House podcast, where you must be this tall to ride the ride. I'm Mark Green. I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. Welcome back, everybody. After the epic mid-season finale of Fuller House, there was Japan, and it was really racist. And then two a wet two engagements got broken up. Secrets were revealed, lives were ruined, and an yes. entire country was mocked endlessly. But mm. Fernando did get to go to Sanrio Land, which they kept calling Hello Kitty Land. Well, yeah, they they gotta localize it for the American audience. They're not gonna know who San Rio is. All in all, <laughs> all in all, great episode, ten out of ten. <laughs> but we're not talking about the Japan episode. We're talking about this episode, and that's the first of many amazing transitions I'm gonna have this episode. Just yeah. you wait and which, see. Which dare I say it? Here's my hot take for this episode: Is what? this the first episode of Fuller House that's like a normal sitcom episode? I'm not saying a I mean, great sitcom episode. I'm saying I did not exit this one going, what the fuck was that? I went like, oh, there was an I, A plot. There was a B plot. Everything resolved. I, I'm i trying. No, no, I, I know what you're saying. I'm yeah. legitimately trying to think of another episode of this that I could be too. described as a regular sitcom. I am too. That didn't have know. like five I, different plots. It's hard like... for me to do because I feel like every time we record an episode of the podcast, as soon as I hit that re- stop record button, Everything I've just been talking about for the past several hours just leaves my brain. And I just go right back to no thoughts, head empty. I'm genuinely not thinking of, like, specifics in terms of the episodes. I'm thinking of how this is maybe the first time since we started this podcast where I don't go like, what the fuck was that? I know. Mm. <laughs> it is it is weird. It is a surprisingly just normal, like, yeah, if I woke up and per- turned the TV on, this would be what I expected. Yeah, and yeah. on our first watch through, it was like midway through season three that we were like, oh, did they learn how to do this show? Because <laughs> it never gets non-crazy, but I remember we were watching it and it was like, oh, this is like a markedly better put together episode than they usually are. I, mm. Yeah, I mean, just I mean, I think it hit a lot of the buttons that we kind of liked. Like we liked sad characters, we liked the kids. So, and the kids were heavily involved yeah. in this. That's probably this why episode. Mark likes this episode so much, is because a lot of these plots involve the children. Maybe that's true. They, and they do get DJ in there. She has stuff going on. It furthers DJ's story, but this episode does heavily feature the children. And yeah. it has Steph being a mess, which I missed. Oh, you know, yeah. We, we always love Steph as a mess, but this was like focusing on Steph being a yeah. mess. And that was nice. Guys, do I like this episode? I like this episode. I think so. yeah, it it sounds good. like you like this episode. I, this I, I didn't leave going, what a great episode. I really liked that. But I'm like, maybe I like this episode. Yeah. <laughs> we've had episodes we've liked. You know, yeah, yeah. We're exactly. fans of the show. I, when I say they're crazy, I don't mean I don't like them. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, the episodes are crazy, but we thrive on the chaos. I, lo- I oh, personally yeah. love the chaos of most Fuller House episodes. Oh, they're, it's fantastic. But like, yeah, this episode did not have like live stage performances and random celebrity encounters. Yeah, yeah there's have... no there's no random Macy Gray. <laughs> what, what it really is for me is that there were three stories, four arguably, with what was going on with DJ and they all had a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah. Which does not happen in this show very often. We don't ask for much. And at that point, like the bar is literally on the floor. Yes. This episode just comes in, it picks up the bar and it throws it into the ocean. (laughs) I don't know. I'm not understanding where the metaphor comes from. I was going to say like they stepped over the bar because you know, they, they cleared it. But throwing it into the ocean. It's true. Well, it raised the bar. Because the show then oh, okay. goes, it raises raised, it and then just the throws bar. it away. And there's no more bar. There's no yeah. bar. The bar is non-existent. Anyway, do we want to get into what happens in this episode? Do you want me to yeah. start since I have the Let's notes? do it. <laughs> Such Go is the fact it. that in continuing the theme of the show being kind of like normal, they actually have like a cold open 
where they yeah, yeah they just everybody's it's like jet a very lagged. standard like disconnected scene where yep. they wake up because they're jet lagged from from being in Tokyo. Yep. Everybody <laughs> yeah. thinks it's it's 3 p.m. when it's 3 a.m. Everybody thinks it's Tuesday when it's Thursday. They just lost a bunch of days. Like, do they are they in stasis alien style traveling from Tokyo to San Francisco? I, I have a theory and hear me out on this one. Mm-hmm. So I think as we can all agree that the people on Fuller House are not regular humans. They are some, so my theory is that they're some sort of like robot or alien people. And with the entire thing going on in Tokyo, they had to spend a couple days to recharge. Mm. So they were just charging, recharging up their batteries for several days. And that's where the disconnect came from. And Steph is the only one able to keep track of the time. So that lends credence to Steph as a human. And that's why she's a mess. Because everybody (laughs) else is this weird being. J Money is glitching. (laughs) He's glitching. That's why this. This show Stuff's a mess, ma- but in a human way. Does this show make more sense if you look at it from the perspective of they are a bunch of robots programmed to act out a sitcom? You got a lot of archetypes up front and like Jay Money's the bad boy son. And then partway through season two, he like falls <laughs> off the roof and he starts glitching yes. and he becomes a real sad boy. It was yeah. Fernando all along. Yes. You're right, this works. Kimmy's AI was underdeveloped, so it's just, it's that thing of, like, when you, like, when an AI just inserts random things, it's just not trained well enough. Mark, you're getting, you're getting dangerously close to the plot of WandaVision. (laughs) (laughs) You're getting dangerously close. In a way, in a way. So, that brings up the question, when is the track dropping, uh, it was Fernando all along? I just want to know when that's dropping. Yeah. But anyway, DJ doesn't know what's going to happen with Steve. No, even though they left their current partners for each other and yeah. broke up a Two wedding. Two marriages were ruined. They they literally told each other that they were each other's soulmates. And now they're like, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to deal with this. And it's like, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, you just got out of big relationships. Steve just got out of a really serious relationship. I guess her relationship with Matt was also very serious they were engaged very briefly yeah um (laughs) but also think about why you ended these relationships Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's i I thought you agreed you you belonged together but um dj's just like i guess i'm single and this is just things is crazy oh gotta hate that single life yeah. And well, am I right when you get open the fridge and you realize yeah. there's just like an expired yogurt in there and it's like, damn, I got to fill my fridge. I don't I feel like that's a joke single people make. I don't know. It, it feels like Mark. I, it feels like Harrison. Oh, Harrison has here. a girlfriend. He's trying to appeal to us. <laughs> wow, Harrison. Wow. I'm trying to blend in with all the single people in the room. Ooh, my friends who I do a podcast with are so sad. Yeah, yeah, fuck you and your actually yes. successful love life. What, you think you're better than us because you have a girlfriend? Fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. We'll start our own podcast. This is the, the single the single guys podcast. It's just me and Mark talking about how lonely we are. And Steph is, she has to take these hormone shots, but she's afraid of needles. I'm just going to, we keep going off on tangents. I'm just going to not even transition. I'm just going to act like we've been talking about the episode the entire time. There we go. Indeed. Okay. We also, this is when we find out a a new tidbit that I really love, which is Fernando is allergic to everything, apparently. Yes. (laughs) Including uh, balloon animals and jazz. Ah, but specifically balloon animals, that, that should yeah. be said. Balloons are fine, but like as soon as it's twisted into a certain shape, it's all good. And he says this, he says, once it's a poodle, I'm gone. I was going to say, like, he said balloon animals, not just balloon poodles. So this could be like any animal. So this begs the question, what about like a snake? <laughs> Ooh. If it's like yeah. a balloon snake. Can people be uh. allergic to snakes? <laughs> well, no, a balloon no, snake. No, no, I know it's a balloon snake. I'm just wondering in general, because my take on it, was that maybe it's a like psychological thing? Fine, Mark, a balloon mm. worm. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like he's so allergic to dogs that he sees a very stylized representation of a dog as a balloon animal, and his body just starts reacting. 
can he not watch children cartoons if that's the case? Because there's a he lot said of he's allergic to everything, it's, and that's why. Wait, wait, he can't watch children's cartoons anymore, and that is why he is rivals with a child. This it, it's all coming together. <laughs> he hate he resents Max because Max can enjoy the things he cannot. <laughs> Damn it, Max! Watching Adventure Time when I can't. <laughs> I, I'm glad we've cracked this nut. Everybody is is a robot except for Fernando and and Stephanie. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I, I also want to point out Fernando's entrance in this scene is absolutely wonderful because yep. he's also jet lagged and he's like, "Well, it's three a.m. here, which means it's really seven p.m. tomorrow in Japan." So I'm just gonna like, let's we're gonna figure out what I'm in the mood for tomorrow night, and just he just starts stealing food from yep. the fridge. That's when he takes out Stephanie's hormone he's shot. The new Steve. Apparently, he's gonna eat Stephanie's hormone shot. Yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good bit. Or, or, or Fernando wants to get pregnant. Ooh, that's true. I mean, I do think it's a very good bit where he like goes up to DJ's fridge. He's like, "Oh, what am I in the mood for tomorrow night?" And then DJ's like, "Uh, how about something from your own house?" And then Fernando says. No, nah, that, that doesn't sound right, which is just, you know, we love our good sweet boy. We love our, our sweet good sweet boy, Fernando. Boy. Juan Pablo de Pache, please come on our podcast. This is an open invitation. Like, we don't have to, like, we, we're, I've been trying to say it more often because you haven't been responding to our emails. Um, but we just <laughs> you want you to know. You haven't been responding to our emails, our texts, or our threatening letters slipped under your d- door. <laughs> I even used a terrier pigeon. With cutout magazine. We thought it would be fun if we used cutout magazine letters. Yeah, I was going to say, in retrospect, cutting out magazine letters was kind of a bad idea. <laughs> thought it would give it some nice pizzazz. <laughs> yeah, you got to you gotta spice it up a little bit. Also, yeah. Juan Pablo, if you're not going to come on our podcast, please at least send back the terrier pigeon. I spent a lot of money on that pigeon. By the way, those red splatters on the letter were jam. I was making a sandwich. I was making a PB and J. I understand it might look like blood. It's not. This was. It was a very fun letter. I know how much you like jam. I wanted to sprinkle some on the letter. Yeah, and I know the paper was like all crumpled up. It's because we were trying to get it to you as fast as possible. So I like just shoved it in my pocket and ran all the way to your house to leave it outside your front door. So that's why it's all like crinkled up. And, you know, I know it mentions, you know, along with the the red stains that we have your daughter. Um, That's just our sense of humor. You know, (laughs) that was a quirky, fun joke we were making. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) we're, We're just quirky like that. Um, yeah, it's it's not a it's all it's all shits and doodles, you know. Adorable. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> remember that episode of New Girl where she slipped someone a ransom note? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ramona gets a letter. <laughs> That's right. Ramona gets her own letter. This one is over the phone and not a ransom note, but it's a note of acceptance. She got accepted uh, into the San Francisco School of the Performing Arts. Yes, that one. That's cool. Yeah, wait. Was it over the phone? No, she got a letter, right? She got a letter, yeah. It was, oh, it was a, a big letter. deal out of reading it. Yeah, oh, never mind. I'm I'm just stupid. <laughs> you sure are, Zach. Yeah, you I know. You sure are. <laughs> Uh, now, is it time to bring back my old catchphrase? <laughs> there, there was one night we were hanging out, and Zach just kept saying naturally throughout the night, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what a catchphrase. I mean, it's it's not wrong. Like, I am an idiot. But I'm like, in an endearing way, you know? Like, I'm not, I may be an idiot, but I'm not stupid. A, a lovable dummy idiot. like Fernando. Exactly. I mean, I'm just like Fernando. Juan Pablo de Pache, please come on our podcast. But this is so big. She got accepted. It's great. Yes. I don't have much more to say about it. Although possibly we should have. Um, I'd title it Victorious, the new generation. Yes, I brought this up during the uh, when we were watching yeah. the episode. And I'd like to bring it up here. Our spinoff for this episode. It's just Victorious. But replace Tori with Ramona. I, I think it would be significantly better. Yeah, I, I do. I do think it should be like it's a new class in Victorious. But yes, all the old characters are still there. Except Tori. Tori has like transferred. I was going to say it's like Victorious, although you just replace Tori with 
uh, with Ramona and replace like their parents with Fernando and Kimmy. The parents don't really have a big role in the show. Anyway. Not, you can replace yeah. them with Fernando. But I also, but like Trina has to say in this alternate yeah. universe, Trina is still there and Trina is Ramona's yeah. sister. It's true. <laughs> We're pitching slightly different shows, but I might like yours more, which sounds like just Victorious. I mean, yeah, just Victorious, but with Ramona's personality instead of Tori's. Is that yeah. what we're trying Although to get I at? do like the idea of like of like Victorious, the new generation, because we can have like a Robbie equivalent be J Money. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you're J- right. Oh, J Money gets super into puppets. <laughs> <laughs> I say this as someone who loves puppets. Puppets in theater, yeah, definitely J Money. Oh that's God. that's his calling. Just, I know, I know his 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 calling as established by the show is to be a barista, but his true calling is puppetry. I just love the way that you're like, oh, J Money gets really into puppets, <laughs> just like the realization. Yeah, it's it's so in character. It's so perfect for him. Oh, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Also, can you imagine the rage Ramona would feel at finding out that after working so hard. J Money got into the same performing arts school as her, and he's doing because puppetry. <laughs> that actually would be very funny. I feel like I feel like in this alternate universe, uh, there's like an episode where there's like a whole ceremony where uh, Rex the puppet is passed down from generation to generation of sad boy at oh, the no. uh, at the school. So it's like a heartfelt episode where Robbie says goodbye to Rex and oh. gives him to J Money. We're, we're gonna we're gonna get into we're gonna we're gonna get back on track soon, but. Is does Rex have like a new voice? Like it's J Money now is operating the puppet, or it's the same voice? Rex is some sort of like possessed doll. I would prefer the I would prefer the second one. That's what personally. I was thinking. I think it would be okay, much funnier yeah. if it's just like the same voice and Rex is just like a possessed doll. Yeah, but guys, well, yeah, well, it's not Matt Bennett doing the voice. It's a different person. No, I'm yeah. No, 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 no. no. I'm saying like in Victoria. So like, yeah, it's it's right. Yeah. yeah. But guys, Max is three and three quarters feet tall, which means <laughs> three and three quarters feet tall. He's a very tiny boy. He's not tall enough to ride the troller coaster at Magic Mountain or whatever oh, I it was. I care so much. Oh, about no. How tall he is. He's he gonna... wants to ride the roller co- the troller coaster. But guys. He has some hair gel left behind by Uncle Jesse, so he spikes his hair up, and now he's 4'2", and he can uh, ride the because ride. Because that's exactly how height works. Yeah, nobody would ever check in any other way. They wouldn't just, like, smush his hair down. I like to just throw my hair up. Uh, like, I'm already taller, the tallest host of the podcast, just as, like, a simple flex, but I like to really flex my height yeah. on Morgan Harrison by, like, using a bunch of hair gel, just slicking my hair up all the time, just to, like, flex it that much more, be like, ha, you guys are short and I'm not. <laughs> yeah, Zach, Zach is the worst, is what we're saying. Um. I'm also an idiot, but at least I'm tall, and that's my one redeeming quality. My one redeeming quality <laughs> is that I'm tall. Wow. So, ladies, hit me up, because from what I've heard... Being six feet is like the most important thing. So this makes me like the most eligible bachelor like ever. Yeah, uh, I mean, according to the movie Tall Girl. Oh wow. Yeah, size thirteen Nike. We wa- we watched and did not hate Tall Girl. <laughs> we did not hate it. It, it doesn't uh, stick its landing. I should preface this with did not hate it as much as we thought we were going to hate it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. We we like. Come on, Dunkers. We like <laughs> Dunkers. <laughs> Dunkers. And, and, and the exchange student who's the really hot guy, but he doesn't realize he's hot because everybody is hot in this country. <laughs> <laughs> there were some good things in Tall Girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so where the hell were we? What I was going to say, we, Max. Have we been talking Max about the spoke. show okay, at all? Okay, okay, <laughs> guys, I have notes. I will keep us on okay. track if you let Holy me keep shit. us on track. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't mean to have a freak out. I was just, I was about to get us on track. And then Harrison starts saying like, oh, we should get on track. And I'm like, just let me go. <laughs> okay. let me oh, go. Peacock, you gotta let me fly. I'm going to keep us on track and not get into that metaphor Zach just used. <laughs> <laughs> Max has spiked up his hair, meaning he is now tall enough to ride the ride. I was waiting for the moment where they get on the ride and Max like 
shoots out of the roller coaster and dies. <laughs> I was like, how are Jesus. they going to deal with that? Because this feels like what they're setting up, right? They're cheating the system, so it's wholly unsafe and they get into trouble. I'm like, this is too much for an episode of Fuller House. And then instead, it's just not a problem. Yeah, it's just that it's, it's like a momentary No, the joke. problem is instead, Max is now ready to ride the roller coaster with J Money, his but, brother. His brave, his brave, brave yes. big brother. J Money says, what if I'm not as brave as you? And J Money, completely caught off guard, says, you think I'm brave? <laughs> I mean, yes, I am brave. Huzzah. Oh, we love our sad boy. We love our sad we boy. We love our sad boy. But he, he gives Max a run through. He puts him in a chair and like spins the chair around. And he says, <laughs> when you're afraid, you got to look fear in the eye and say, not today. Which Tyler lets us know is a quote from Game of Thrones. I probably messed it up, but um, <laughs> J Money. I think you got it right. Yeah, but my, it. my it point is J Money is a plagiarist. Yes. Oh, yes. That's the term for when someone quotes a TV show. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's it's very much on brand for J Money to steal a quote from a TV show and use it as his own. Yep. And Game of Thrones, really, guys? What are we in a pre- Game of Thrones finale yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> what did this episode come out in like twenty? <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, I guess Game of Thrones still was popular then. <laughs> anyway, that's um. But Ramona's student tour guide liaison person comes back home with them from the San Francisco School of the Performing Arts. What? And she's like so put together. She and Ramona start hanging out, and guys. She's she's a really fun hang, if I do say I so. Was, I was I was gonna say I'd like yeah, to great. first I'd like to just make a mention of like when they first come in and Ramona's like, Wow, I'm so lucky to have you as like my student liaison. You're the best. And she goes, Yes, I know, I'm the best, or something like that. And <laughs> already I was like, from this one line, she is my favorite character. She's so great. She's wonderful. Yeah. Well it, yeah. it it cuts to her and Ramona dancing, and Ramona says, Oh, I'm getting tired. Can we take a break? And she, like, looks around and is like, yeah, I guess no one's watching. We can take a break. <laughs> and it just becomes very apparent that yeah. this is some, like, this yeah. is some weird cult shit. This is a yeah. creepy school. Some they cult they share a snack. She says to Ramona, like, here, here's, you know, here's a snack from the San Francisco School of the Performing Arts. It's wheat germ, kale, and beets. Which I had forgotten what the last component was. I forgot it was beets. And in my head, for a second, I was like, was it beef? <laughs> beef. Was it beef. wheat germ, kale, and beef? Like just some bone broth in there. <laughs> yeah, or just like ground meat. <laughs> just ground See, this meat. Is, <laughs> this is what they didn't show you in Victorious, is that, um, is that really it was just a giant cult. <laughs> yeah. Beck is just throwing back those beef <laughs> smoothies <laughs> all the time. Those beef smoothies. Uh, oh, oh fucking psycho it's is the cool honestly leader. that sounds like a drink that would be in a in a dan schneider show like i can imagine yeah. sam from my carly drinking a beef smoothie yeah. that's yeah. true <laughs> so i carly's yeah. on netflix we should do that for one of we, our in between season we, we, we should we we have we have an in between season episode planned yeah we have um, one lined up and i'm but, excited um, about it but oh yeah it's gonna be a good one so make sure you keep watching we need to visit i i carly a show that might honestly be on the same level of weird as Fuller House. In a way, I, yeah, it was, I mean, <laughs> there was a real progression to those, to those shows. The Dan Schneider, um, yeah. Cinematic Nickelodeon. Universe. Yeah, that Drake and Josh is kind of like a normal, is is a very normal <laughs> world. Yeah. Uh, iCarly is, is more heightened. And I'd say Victoria starts out either below or at an iCarly level and then gets more and more heightened. Mm -hmm. Like there's that really weird yeah. episode of Victoria's where it's just the breakfast club. Oh yeah. Well, let's not forget the April Fool oh, uh, the April Fool's Day episode. Yeah. Which is just uh wonderful. But we're get but guys, we're getting off track. Uh anyways, the the student liaison is just like, oh nobody's watching. She's like checking around for cameras and microphones and she like slips her a note that just says get out of here while you still can or run or yeah this episode is a remake of get out <laughs> yes so she's just like very subtly trying to convince to tell ramona do not come here she, she <laughs> slips her a note school. that says get out while you still can and then and ramona's like does this note say get out while you still can she says no 
I love the San Francisco School of the Performing Arts. Leave. That's why the one black character in this in this episode says it. It's, it's a remake of Get Out. It's true, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next, Kimmy's going to help Steph with the needle because Kimmy knows the trick, which is to distract the person while you give them the shot. Which my, my mom, who's given people shots many times, she said her trick is if you like kind of tap someone or you like give them a different sensation or pain to respond to as you inject them, then they don't notice the needle. That's actually the logic behind scratching yeah. because yeah. the pain yeah, that you're I've, I've heard that as well. is yeah, less yeah. than the scratching. Yeah. Or it's like if you scratch over an itch, the like pain takes over like the itch sensation. Yeah, but but instead, uh, Kimmy's just Kimmy's strategy is look over there. <laughs> actually, actually, this is maybe the smart. This scene is maybe the smartest Kimmy has ever been. No, I, well, I think look the the look over there is what I said as a joke. The thing she did was she just like picked up a banana and started using it as a phone and was like, oh, it's for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't work, and that's not her being smart, because next, they just get to talking, and Kimmy, it gets pretty heartfelt. Kimmy says, you know, I, you know, I just, I think, I want to help you. I, I think of you as a sister, and I'm so happy you're having this baby, and I love that I get to be a part of your life, and it's very tender, and then after that moment is done, Kimmy says, okay, all done, you've been injected. Yeah. And uh, and she's like, what? Wait, well, when, when? She says, well, well, I was saying all that sisterhood crap. <laughs> that was great. It's a legitimately sweet moment. And it's it's funny. probably like one of the best yeah. Kimmy Gibbler scenes in the entire show, at least up to this point. She was being very, she was, it's very good. And she's being very clever. She had a fake out distraction and then a very, very good distraction. And then she answers a banana phone. It's like, oh, I guess smart Kimmy is gone. Yep. <laughs> I'm getting a call. You only get five minutes of smart Kimmy she's, a day. She's an idiot savant. You only get five minutes of smart Kimmy every year. Use it wisely. Yes. That's her superpower for five minutes out of the year. She can go big brained. Yep. So, um... We go to Mad... We go to the troller coaster. Yeah, yes. the troller coaster. And Tyler noticed something very important which is that there are people in line behind Max that are shorter than Max. Yep. So, like, what the hell? So the entire first joke behind this roller coaster thing is bullshit. And by the way, Max's hair is still up. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, they go up, they find a way at the front of the line, and there's, we just, I just want to get this out of the way, the ride operator is one of, the greatest characters Fuller House has ever seen. Craig. His name is Craig, and he is the best. We love him. We stand Craig. We love him because, I mean, you guys, you, if, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know our thing. You know us. He is a bitter, sad <laughs> man. <laughs> he is a very sad man. Yep. He is... He's done with everyone else's bullshit. He... DJ is at the front of the line. Max says, I kind of want to go with, you know, it seats two. I kind of want to go with Jay Money. Um, and so he asks DJ, are you alone? She says, oh, it's complicated. I had this whole thing. I was in a relationship, but I was in love with this other guy and he broke off his wedding and now I don't know where we're at. And we were just going, DJ, God. Yeah. And then she goes, oh, you meant on the oh. ride. Yeah. And, and she says, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm single and I'm single. And he says like, big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Which Ouch. I'd love, I feel like most of these characters who are just side characters, when our main characters do, I've said characters a lot, when our, when our protagonists do weird shit, they just kind of like roll their eyes and go on with their lives. I kind of love that Craig is like, yeah, no shit, you're single. <laughs> <laughs> Craig is the best. And then he's like, the whole thing was like, all right, we need like a single rider because she's going alone, blah, blah, blah. And then who should emerge from the masses? Was it Matt? But one... Was it Uncle Joey? But one... Was it Danny Tanner? Dr. Steve Fraser Hale. Crane. No way! Yeah, it's Fraser Crane. <laughs> also known as Steve Hale. No, what? Wait, wait you're, te you're telling me it was Steve and not Kelsey Grammer reprising his role as Dr. Fraser Crane? <laughs> Mark, I hate to tell you this, but unfortunately, <laughs> Kelsey Grammer no. will not be reprising his role 
and it was in fact just well he the, the, Zach beg to differ because they're reviving Frasier on Paramount oh Plus. okay I didn't I didn't even know so that. he will yeah. be revising Kelsey Grammer is coming back he yeah. will be reprising his role but you are Mark, correct do I need to his... do I need to direct you to my catchphrase again <laughs> no no I Zach Zach I understand yes. thank you finally someone understands the struggle right it is anyways it Steve is Steve comes in and Frank is like, yo, this, this fucker cut in line. He doesn't say it like that. But he basically says, he's cutting in line. Get him. And then he proceeds to do nothing and allow Steve and DJ to ride together. Yes. But he does call security because Steve has broken the rules and he has to go to jail. He has to go to Liar's Jail. <laughs> or Theme Park Jail. Yeah. Well, I think it's Security Land. Is, this, yeah. is the Security Land a dungeon? Do they have, like... Guards armed with like swords and pikes or whatever, or are they just armed with rubber chickens and they just like, <laughs> slap them? <laughs> the guard, their guard dogs are like the giant stuffed animal dogs you win while playing carnival games. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or they're little people dressed up as the as the uh, the animals. Oh no! <laughs> this, <win> and... <laughs> this show would. <laughs> they would. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they decide that even though they called security on this man. Sure, he can ride the ride. Why yeah, not? Yeah, he gets on <laughs> with very little trouble. With very and, little and resistance. And Craig just, like, lets, presses the button and lets the ride go. I mean, he's dead inside. What does he care? Yeah, now right? it's J-Money and Max's turn. But guys, I'm starting to think maybe J-Money isn't as brave as we thought he was. Wait, really? No, there's no way. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe. J-Money, fountain of courage. Are you telling me? J Money is a coward? Are you telling me J Money has stolen Valor? Did he not actually fight in the rock? <laughs> did he not actually get a purple heart? I was gonna say, did the purple heart mean nothing? <laughs> was he just a member of the Coast Guard this whole time? Oh my god, shots fired. <laughs> No, no disrespect to the Coast Guard. I'm just <laughs> no disrespect to the Coast Guard after fully disrespecting the Coast Guard. J Money tells Max, "I lied because the for the first time you looked up to me." Which I think in other episodes back when J Money was cool, Max did look up to him. But yeah. he says, "For the first yeah. time you looked up to me. You thought I was brave." And Max says, "Like what about that stuff about looking fear in the eye and going, not today?" And J Money has um. A really great line that's so in character where he says, I'm more of a fear, you make a good point kind of guy. <laughs> that was good. So I, very good. J Money straight up going, I am a coward. So J Money tries to go back and then Craig's all like, hey, everybody, we got a BBC here. And we were all like, what the fuck? Yeah, British goes, broadcasting yeah, channel. Big baby chicken. Big baby chicken. Not, buck, buck, not, buck. British, not, not British broadcasting system. That was what we were thinking. Get your head out of the gutter. Uh, <laughs> but but Craig, we should mention when he <laughs> when he starts the ride, Craig is apparently required to say the line, time to rock and troll. And the reason why I say he's required is because he says it with so much frustration and derision. Also, he doesn't say it for DJ and Steve. He doesn't say it for DJ and Steve, but I just, it's, I really love that, again, I feel like most side characters would go like, time to rock and troll, and then they'd shoot him off, but Craig just goes, time to rock and troll. I, Craig's, I, it's so sad. Craig's working for me. Yeah. Craig's Craig is the me. best. We love Craig. We love our sad boy. But anyways, we now we cut boy. to... Everybody's on the roller coaster and Steve is going up to DJ and he's like, DJ, I've caught up to you now. I, I really need to tell you something. And uh, because at that point he, he, they drop, they, they fall. And then Steve, when he's about to say something, is just screaming I, for his life. I was I was really curious if you were going to do the scream or if you were just going to say and then there's the drop and Steve is interrupted. I really like that you let out a genuinely like pained scream that you went. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I decided to just like go middle ground for both. Yeah, no, I, I, I really liked it. I was, I'm not 
making fun of I, I I just thought it was very funny the way the scream came came out. Uh, like so, I'm like, so a, like someone stabbed you as you were telling us what happened in this episode. No, if someone stabbed me, I'd just be like, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> the greatest thing to say after being stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna want this back or can I keep it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> J Money and go on. No, 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 it's fine. Um, J Money and Max start making these confessions to each other. J Money says, "I'm sorry I ate your skinny cow ice cream." Max says, "I'm sorry I fold your clothes when you're sleeping." I have two you things. Did what? Yeah, exactly. I have two things to say about this. One, <laughs> it it baffles me and entertains me that J Money is so much more outraged that Max folds his clothing than Max is about anything else. Dude, yeah. if someone was folding my clothing, I'd be like, dude, can I just, can I just, I'd pay you for that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like his reaction would have been like, what? That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this completely goes against everything that I've been saying for the past two seconds. <sighs> like, I'm sorry, J Money, that I blog about all of your failures in school. I'm sorry, J Money, that I showed Rocky your baby pictures. She thought it was hilarious. I'm sorry, J Money, that like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's That's a lot they could have so done. So much more evil. Yep. I. <laughs> but I also kind of love that in this scene, it's Max's things are he eats skinny cow ice cream and he folds J Money's clothing. That for all that we say, DJ is a mom and that's like her thing. Being a mom is also kind of Max's thing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. In a way, I can see it. Yeah, that makes sense. Max yeah. Max is a middle-aged wine mom, is what I'm saying. DJ is mm. a soccer mom. Max is a wine mom. Max is like the mom who's done with everybody's shit. She's like, but is also like the head of the PTA. Yes. Yes. Max, Max knows all the gossip about the other moms. Oh, yeah. DJ is uh, Wanda in WandaVision, and Max is like that bad mom from the third episode in the, the 60s cart- uh, sitcom episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we should also mention, this is kind of like a really cool indoor roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. It's like insane how much they get. Out. Well, I mean, like, it's obviously a show, so yeah. it's not real, but. <laughs> like, I have a feeling they filmed them on a stationary set and then flipped the footage around. Yeah. But, yeah, like, we yeah. see some of the track and everything. It's in our, it's spliced together. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a real ride. That yeah, yeah. That footage of. Yeah, it's it and it's it looks like a really good roller coaster. They they didn't do a crappy roller coaster. It's some space mountain shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can put that in Disney. Um, but they, they they get off and Max has had the best time. He and J Money have braved their fears. They're in euphoria. Max's hair is the tallest that anyone's hair has ever been. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Get the Guinness Book of World Records on that shit. Yeah, that and he's tall. He's hair. saying how great it was, and then he pauses. And Harrison went, "Oh, he's gonna vomit." And then Max vomits, and then he goes. <laughs> I should also point out uh, when DJ right. <laughs> when DJ and Steve come back, Steve's like, by the way, did I ever say like that thing that I meant to tell you? And DJ was like, no, you were just kind of screaming for your life the entire time, which to be fair, those were his feelings at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and he gets off the ride and who should be waiting for him? But the theme, the amusement park police, the police. to take him to security <laughs> land. You're going downtown. And they say the that. That's line. what they say. I don't know why I expected Matt to be there. Like they were gonna, they were gonna get off, and Matt was gonna see them. Yeah, Matt's just DJ also was online, see them and they were gonna be like, "You're already getting together like that." Yeah. But no, that didn't happen. Uh, which would have been, it would have been kind of dumb. But <laughs> but but we 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 cut back to the house, to the Fuller house, and guys, it's very cute because Tommy is using a stethoscope on Cosmo. And Steph says, like, how's Cosmo's heartbeat? And Tommy goes, all better. And it's very cute, but I do want to point out one thing, which is that I don't think Tommy has a medical license. <laughs> you bring up a good point. I, he's good practicing point. medicine without a license. And I, th- <laughs> I think that's pretty sketch. 
couldn't they just get a better baby? You know, a baby that does that has g- done the work of going to medical there, school. There is surely a baby with a medical degree. Yeah, just get Doogie Howser on the case. Yeah, Doogie Howser prequel: the younger, the baby years. Yes, <laughs> the veterinarian years. So, so Max practices medicine without a medical license or without a medical degree, um, and. St- Steph starts having some mood swings Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. very, and she goes up to Fernando and Kimmy and they say, how are you? So I'm doing great. And Fernando's like, oh, that's weird. Cause Kimmy said, you know, you might have some irritability, some mood swings. And Steph's like, why are you saying that? Why did you say that name? Why did you say that name? Martha. 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 Everybody gargles in that scene. People don't talk yeah. enough about the fact that everybody is gargling in that scene. <laughs> Save Sorry. Martha. Why did you say that name? <laughs> That's my impression of that scene. Oh my god. I, yeah, Steph's having mood yeah. swings. That's what's going on with Steph. Um, Ramona walks in. <sighs> Kimmy says, and I really like this line, she says, there's my tiny dancer. I just like when them being genuinely jokey with each other. Yeah. It just felt nice. It was nice. Yeah. Hold me closer, tiny, tiny dancer. dancer. Musical bits. Yep. There we go. We got one in there. Guys, Ramona gets a phone call, and guys, she she didn't get the space at the San Francisco School for the performing arts and it's a very real phone call yeah and at the time i said oh no this is a very real phone call they turned (laughs) off her acceptance (laughs) turned it off they rescinded the acceptance hey here's your problem you have the switch on the acceptance on off when it should be on on well here's (laughs) the problem you said it's a m for mini when it should be set to w W for for wombo. wombo (laughs) <laughs> Wombology, the study of Wombo. First grade SpongeBob. Anyway. Yeah. I also I also really love Ramona on the phone says, like, how could you do this to me? This is gonna ruin my life. And then after she's off the phone, Fernando says, So was it good news or bad news? <laughs> <laughs> the good news would have been if it was Popko breaking up with her, because he doesn't know yet. And it's like, oh good, Popko's breaking up with you. <laughs> he he already did break up with her. Now she's dating Marius, the Japanese pop star. Right, of course. Right. Her Japanese pop star boyfriend. Yes. Yay. From the band Sexy Zone. Sexy Zone. The sexiest zone of them all, if I may venture that. Sexy Zone. Although the Danger Zone is also very sexy. Highway to the musical bits. Musical bits. We should be doing that more. We should put musical bits into songs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh... (laughs) Ramona's in her room. She's actually very happy, but she hears Fernando and Kimmy coming, and so she pretends to be sad. And they tell her that she forgot her phone, and Fernando takes out some very small reading glasses. <laughs> yes, they're be- it's a very nice touch. Yeah, to read, very nice touch. I love that he has reading glasses. Yes. To read a text from Lola, which reads, Did your parents buy it when I called pretending to be your dance school? Which uh, I think Harrison pointed out, is a very weird expositiony way to phrase that. Yeah. It's not just yeah, how did it go or did they buy it. It's huh, my good friend Ramona. It is me, Lola. I was the one <laughs> pretending. To, I was the one who called you, not the dance school. It was me pretending. As you know, you see what we what we didn't see is that Ramona hired a hitman to hold uh, Lola hostage while she was doing this. And she's like, you will send this exact text to this number. Yes. She was afraid that they'd be disappointed in her. And they say, what, Ramona? We could never be disappointed in you. And it's a happy ending. But I did kind of want them to go, Ramona, we're not disappointed in you for not wanting to go to the dance school. We're disappointed in you for lying about it. You are grounded for a year. And you're (laughs) going to the dance school. (laughs) <laughs> yes. as punishment as punishment <laughs> <laughs> but uh anyway yeah then uh j money max dj they all they all come home they all bought those shirts with their photos on them oh my god saying like i was trolled at the troller coaster in troll mountain 
Yay. One of those like I survived the troller coaster yeah. kind of deal. And those shirts yeah. only cost thirty seven dollars a piece. What a steal! I don't, I don't, I don't think we talked enough about the fact that it is a troll themed roller coaster. Yeah, I can buy it. Oh, I can buy it. I mean, there's like a themes. Frozen ride with trolls at Disney and everything. Yeah. I mean, personally, trolls are a thing. Personally, I'm just waiting for the sequel, the the second troller coaster. Tro- uh, troller coaster world tour. I was, no, I was just gonna say tro- troller coaster. That was a too. joke about the fact that the sequel to Trolls was called Trolls World Tour. Good night, uh, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was gonna. I was gonna say Trolls Two, Troller Coaster Two. They're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. Oh, oh my god. god! If you could theme a roller coaster after anything, what would it be? Zach apparently troll already two. gave his answer. Troll yeah. Two. Break into electric boogaloo. Oh, that's a I good know one. I brought it up already. Mark, complete the trilogy. You'd say Alvin and the Chipmunks the sequel. Complete the trilogy. I was gonna say I think a a, a Frasier themed roller coaster. <laughs> Damn it! That Mark, would be good. <laughs> you ruined it. We had the whole thing. Going. It'll toss your salads and scramble your eggs. <laughs> that was a reference uh. to the Frasier song. <laughs> 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 Um, but anyway, Steve arrives and he's very tense. He says he's busted out of security land. Apparently they've been holding him for hours. He's on the run from the amusement park police. From the security police. And he and DJ... He he broke out. He broke out of security land because he told them he was going to the bathroom and then never came back. Yep. He and DJ talk about their feelings, their unresolved feelings, which feel... A little resolved, given that they were sitting with each other and saying, you're my soulmate. Yeah. It feels like that's a pretty hard, like, yeah, that's what my feeling is. And I've told you now. Um, But they agree to to wait a month before they jump into things because they don't want to jump into things too quickly. Um, And so Steve starts to leave. Steph is a mess. Steph is a mess. She's crying because she's so touched. Steve leaves. I said, oh, does he come back and give her a kiss? And then Steve comes back and gives her a kiss. Mark was right. Mark was right. And then and then he leaves again. And yes, yeah, Steph is just crying. She's really emotional. She's going through mood swings. She it was a whole story. She had her hormone shots. Then she gets the shots and now she's having mood swings. Yeah, she's very sad. And that's the episode. That's the whole episode. Yeah. Steph is like very sad. She's like crying, all that stuff. You know what else is sad? What? What? This super cool transition I'm making to Sad Boy of the Week. Oh, Tyler, can you add in some like air horns and stuff? Add in some like air horns, like explosion sound effects. Make it be like real cool there. You know, like this absolutely fucking amazing thing just happened. So Sad Boy of the Week. Who are our nominees? Well, I feel like we have to nominate Craig. Craig? Craig. I, I know he's always on there, but J Money. Yeah, J Money. J Money, yes. Staff. Steph, Steph is a mess this episode. Steph is a mess. Uh, Ramona and or the liaison. Ramona and or the liaison. Kara I think... would be great. Wait, was it Kara? Kara? It might have been Kara. I think Kara. it might have been Kara. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll say Kara. We're giving, if she did, if, if it's not. I'm going to IMDb. You guys vamp for a bit. I'm checking IMDb. Yeah, I feel like if we're going and if we did end up giving her the uh, the win, we should say her correct yeah. name. I mean, I mean, we have, we have sad teacher man on the leaderboard. It is Kara. I mean, he has a name. I think he's Mr. Bienberg. But we yeah, called him but, Sad Teacher Man. Yeah, but we yeah. don't have a fun nickname for Kara. It would just be a kind of an insult that we just said the wrong name unintentionally. Mm, that's true. We could call her Depressed Student Girl or Crazy Cult Member. Uh, student Associate, comma, Depressed or Sad. <laughs> sad? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, K- Kara, but yeah, I think I think her more so than Ramona. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ramona's got it together yeah. for the most part. We have a lot of guest stars nominated this episode. Uh, is there anyone else or should I just start running through the cases? I think that's probably everybody from like the main cast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Should I, should I, who should I start with? Let's just start off with the, the guest stars, I guess. Let's yeah. start off with Craig. Oh, Craig. My sweet, Our sweet, sweet Craig. My, my sweet, sad child. Oh. <laughs> Craig, uh, just a general atmosphere of hating his job. <laughs> hating his life, more like. H- hating his job, hating his life. He asks DJ if she's 
if she's alone and she's gives him this long winded answer and he's like, not what I was asking, but I get it. <laughs> he is forced to say time to rock and troll all the time. With a gun to his head. Yeah, with a gun t- to his head. He just Yeah, if he doesn't say it, the sniper will take him out. Every moment this this venom and sadness just drips from him. Uh, horrible. <laughs> and this frustration just drips from him. And I think that's basically just his whole vibe. Um, there's Kara. Unless there's anything else you want me to point out about Craig. But I think it's more a general disposition and all of the things he says rather than... So I can't... I'm, I'm having trouble remembering all the specific examples. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Uh, there's Kara who hates her school and also hates her life. Uh, but is too afraid to say anything. She does not have... This episode was about courage and bravery. She's mm-hmm. not yeah. as brave as Ramona. She's not brave enough to reject the system. She eats, she eats wheat germ kale beet composite. Uh, she can only take breaks from dancing when no one's watching. Uh, she has to communicate her true feelings through a note and then pretend that everything's all right. She can never dance like no one is watching. I've just realized... It's a sad, sad existence. Uh, so then we have Steph, I think, right? Yes. Who we find out is afraid of needles, which people are afraid of needles. It's fine. But she has to get stuck by needles. In the butt. And she enlists, uh, you know, the be- the person you most want to enlist help from, Kimmy Gibbler. Of course. Yes. I, uh <laughs> And uh, she gets, she gets out. This is maybe the saddest thing in her episode. She gets outsmarted by Kimmy Gibbler. Yeah. This is a fair point. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Right? Kimmy's also her boss. That's also pretty sad just yep. in general. Yeah. Um, and then she just keeps going through mood swings. It's really, it's, we've said it before. We'll surely say it again. Steph is a mess and it's great. Yes. And finally, we come to him. Our good sad boy. We love our sad boy. J Money. J Money. The golden child. The touched one. The beautiful J Money. Our beautiful, beautiful boy. For the first time in J Money's life, somebody thinks he is brave. <laughs> <laughs> and he just plays along with it. He goes, Yes, oh, I am brave. So good. And he gives oh. Max advice. And then when the moment comes, he reveals, Okay, actually, I'm a coward. <laughs> I can't go on this roller coaster, even though my eight-year-old brother. I always, I ha- always do, and always have referred to Max as eight. I don't know his actual age. It always occurs to me. Yeah, do we, we haven't actually checked if he's eight years old, but he seems like an eight-year-old. Yeah, yeah. So his his eight-year-old brother has now mustered the courage to ride this ride, but J Money can't do it. Nah. Um, nah, bro. It's fantastic. Um, Max parrots J Money's words back to him. What about not today, Fear? And J Money yeah. says, "No, I'm a coward. I'm more of a yeah, you got a point, Fear <laughs> type person." Um, and then they ride on it and just scream the entire time. And they, they end up having a grand old time. But I just, it's honestly, it's his, it's his cowardice, his posturing. And the fact that he is so touched that his little brother for a moment thinks he's not a coward. He says like, oh, for the first time in your life, Max, you looked up to me. Finally, this eight year old admires me. <laughs> or Jay Money. Oh, man. Anyway. Is it voting time? I think these are four strong nominees, but I think it's voting I, time. We have a lot to work with here. Yeah. Yeah. I Okay. Oh boy, I need to think about this one for a second. This is, I feel like these are four very strong nominees and it's yeah. hard to put one in front of all the others. It is. However, I don't know why, but my gut's going with J-Money this episode. My gut's going with J-Money as well. Okay, I was I was going to say my gut's kind of going with Craig, but I am totally fine with a J-Money win. Craig was the was rivaling it for me, but I think it's yeah, J-Money. Yeah, like it was really between J-Money and Craig for me, with yeah. Steph like not far behind. Yeah. And yeah. 
I mean, listen, I'm totally fine with Jay Money winning. We love our sad boy. Like, we love our sad extend boy. Extend the lead. I, I think it's very funny that Jay Money is just dominating the sad boy of the weak leaderboard. Because that's oh, his yeah. dominating character trait. There yes. are other people who are sad, but it's not always the only thing they're doing. Sadness defines Jay Money. I have the leaderboard yeah. in front of me right now. So after all these episodes, I want you to just take a guess. How many wins does Jay Money have at this oh, point God. in time? Does he have like six or seven? Oh, Mark. Does he have like, I was going to just five. Oh, you're both too low. <laughs> what? What? It's eight. He's at eight he wins eight now. He has eight wins? He has eight. How long have we been doing this podcast? The second okay. place is Fernando with five. Oh, well, God. Here, okay. Here's the thing. And I do worry that I just automatically vote J Money, but I think we only give it to him when he deserves it. He just yeah, happens yeah, to yeah. deserve it a lot. Yeah, yeah, he just happens to deserve it a lot because he's a very sad boy. We love our sad boy. We love our sad boy. Yeah, like I, I honestly wanted to give this to like Craig yeah. or Kara, yeah. but I think, I think he really does deserve it here. Yeah, my brain said give it to Craig, but my heart said J Money. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> at first for a while, I thought you weren't gonna do it because he's already so ahead. But no, vote with your heart. Yeah, I'm voting with. You my know, heart. otherwise we're not being loyal to the fans. We're not being true to ourselves. We're letting everyone down. We need to provide the most accurate depiction of sadness in Fuller House. And I think that's what we're doing. Yeah. Trust your heart. Let fate decide, guys. Exactly. To guide these lies we see. A paradise mm -hmm. untouched by men within the world. This is the song <laughs> from Tarzan, by the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> Two worlds, one family. All right. Well, is that uh, is that everything you want to take this Mark? That is it. Um... Guys, we hope you liked this episode. We hope you like this podcast and we hope you keep listening and we hope you we hope other people listen and everything. You can find please follow us on social media. We are at Fullest House Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope you had fun. I'm Mark Green. I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. And until next time, may your houses be fuller. May your dancers be tiny and rock and troll, y'all.